In this video today, we are going to learn about the many amazing properties of the element carbon, which gives you the power to form so many chemical bonds. We will also learn about the many roles and functions of the four essential macromolecules that are responsible for building all organic life on Earth. And we are getting started right now. I'm Travis Spivey, joined my son Jordan Spivey, and our video today will answer three key questions. First, how is carbon able to form so many complex organic molecules such as macromolecules? Second, what are the structures and functions of the four macromolecules responsible for making up all life on Earth? And third, what are some examples and sources of these four powerful macromolecules? All of these questions and more will be answered in our video today. Say if you are super hungry and want to get something to eat from your favorite burger place, Wendy King. You go in and see all of these different foods to choose from. Hamburgers, hot dogs, sub sandwiches, french fries, and so much more. In your big curious mind, you look around and see everyone eating and drinking and begin to think, what is all of this food made of and why do we need it to live? All of the foods we eat are made out of four different types of macromolecules, which are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We'll discuss them more in detail in this video, but for now, let's take a look at what all they have in common. Carbon. So let's take a look at some of the properties of carbon. First of all, carbon is found in all living things, so it doesn't matter if it's a tree, if it's a bird, an apple, some grass, or an earthworm, or a fish, carbon is found in all of these things. And second, carbon has four valence electrons, so it can gain, lose, or share electrons. This means carbon can combine with itself and many other different types of elements. And this is what enables carbon to form so many complex organic molecules because it's just so flexible in what it can bind and combine with. And then third, carbon can form straight chains, branch chains, and ring patterns. So carbon is extremely versatile. And now on to our macromolecules which are literally giant molecules, and they're formed by the process of polymerization, which is when large compounds are built by combining smaller ones together. So if we take a look at the very basic building blocks of a macromolecule, they're actually called monomers, which are single molecules. And then if we combine many of these monomers together, they form a polymer, which is a chain of monomers. And we take these polymers, and these polymers actually form our four macromolecules, which are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Let's dive deeper into our four macromolecules and we'll start off with carbohydrates, which are compounds made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they can be found in bread, pasta, fruits, and sweets. And secondly, carbohydrates are used as main source of energy for living things. So if you eat a Snickers bar or some bread or some candy, all of these are sources of carbohydrates which give us quick energy that we need in order for our daily functions. And they are also used for structural purposes for some living things. Like cellulose, for example, is used in plants to provide structural support. And third, single simple sugars are known as monosaccharides, which include glucose, fructose, and galactose. And disaccharides contain two monosaccharides combined together, such as sucrose. And the way I remember is that mono means one and di stands for two. And then fourth, complex carbohydrates are known as polysaccharides, which are many monosaccharides bonded together. They include starch, cellulose, and glycogen, and they take longer to digest. So that's why there's a difference between simple carbohydrates and comp complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates include mono and disaccharides. Complex carbohydrates include polysaccharides, which take much longer to digest since there are so many monosaccharides combined together. And now let's take a look at our second macromolecule, which are lipids. And they're compounds made of mostly carbon, hydrogen, and a few oxygen atoms. They include fats, oils, waxes, and steroids, and most of them are not soluble in water due to the fact that most of them are non-polar. That means they don't have a positive and negative end for water to pull apart. That's why they say oil and water don't mix. Second, lipids are used to store energy, provide insulation, use as waterproof coverings, biological membranes, and as chemical messengers. So they have so many functions within our body to help our bodies maintain homeostasis and to keep us alive. And third, most lipids are formed when a glycerol molecule combines with fatty acids. 
When carbon atoms are joined by a single bond in a lipid fatty acid chain, the lipid is called saturated. Saturated fats are normally solid at room temperature, so this would include fats such as butter or lard. Now these are the types of fats that the doctors tell us to stay away from because they can be bad for our heart and bad for our bodies. And then fourth, if there is at least one carbon to carbon double bond in a fatty acid, then the lipid is called unsaturated. If there are more than one double bond, then the lipid is called polyunsaturated. Unsaturated fats are normally liquids at room temperature, so this would include unsaturated fats such as olive oil or peanut oil, and these fats seem, tend to be more preferred by doctors and by health experts over saturated fats. And now let's move on to our third macromolecule, which are proteins, and they are compounds made of mostly of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms, and they are made up of amino acids. And some sources of proteins include meats, beans, and eggs. And secondly, proteins have many functions, including growth and maintenance of tissues, catalysts to chemical reactions like enzymes. They provide structure, maintain pH, balance fluids, boost immune health, transport, and store nutrients. And third, proteins are made up of many combinations of amino acids. Amino acids are joined together by bonding an amino group to a carboxyl group with bonds known as peptide bonds. And then fourth, the sequence of amino acids is a protein's primary structure. Secondary structure is folding or coiling of the polypeptide chain. And then tertiary structure is the complete three-dimensional arrangement of polypeptide chain. And now let's move on to our last macromolecule, which are nucleic acids. And there are compounds made up mostly of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus atoms. They're made up of nucleotides, and their sources of nucleic acids include DNA and RNA. Secondly, nucleic acids functions include carrying the code for making proteins, i.e. DNA, and storing and transmitting genetic information received from our parents. And third, all nucleic acids are made up of the same building blocks or monomers. Chemists call the monomers nucleotides, and each nucleotide includes a sugar, phosphate, and a nitrogenous base. So adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil, for example. And then fourth, nucleic acids are the key factors in protein synthesis, which include the processes of replication, transcription, and translation to make proteins that make up me and you. Let's do a recap of our four types of macromolecules. First, we have carbohydrates, which are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Their basic building blocks are monosaccharides like glucose, fructose, and galactose. They combine together to make polysaccharides like cellulose and starch. Their primary function is to provide energy for most organisms like animals and humans and structural support for other organisms such as plants. Second, we have lipids which are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as well. Their building blocks are glycerol and fatty acids. Their main functions are long-term energy storage, insulation for our bodies, waterproof coverings for plants, acting as a bouncer for the cell as part of the biological membranes, and as chemical messengers. Third, we have proteins which are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Their basic building blocks are amino acids. Their many functions include growth and maintenance of tissues, catalysts to chemical reactions via enzymes, provide structure support, maintain pH balance in fluids, boost immune health, and transport and store nutrients. And fourth, nucleic acids, which are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Their basic building blocks are nucleotides, which includes a sugar, phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. Their primary functions are to carry the code for making proteins, i.e. DNA, and storing and transmitting genetic information received from our parents. Now back to our checks for understanding. Go ahead and pause the video now to see how many of them you can answer. And that's our video on carbon and macromolecules. Hope you guys got a lot of information from this. If you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also check us out on our website at fathersoninterfaces.com. I am Jordan Spivey signing off with my dad, Travis Spivey. And I hope you have an awesome day. Peace. Peace.